Hi everyone, my name is Vadim. I run the reporting at Rugged, and I'll be talking about what we do and what we plan for reporting. First of all, uh, a little bit about what we do here at Rugged. Uh, so, wait, hold on. All right. So, what we do is we primarily target pages, confirmation pages, where you make a purchase, and we offer you additional things. So, for example, on Ticketmaster, you will get an offer to get, I don't know, coupon for drinks, parking, subscribe to Hulu. So we bring um, both parts of This is very bad. <laughs> yeah, so we bring like different parts of the e-commerce. One part is partners, where we would show offers, and one is clients, who are going to be showing offers. Uh, but the talk is not going to be about that. It's going to be about the data we have. And you can think, think about it as we have like views, clicks, purchases, basic stuff, right? Various events. And we provide different types of reporting. So it could be aggregated data sets. So, like, I don't know, aggregated number of impressions, views, real time reporting to see how your website is performing and measuring the platform effectiveness where we need to figure out. Okay, did we help a, a partner or a client to make a purchase uh, to convert a user to, or not? And we do some anomaly detection to figure out whether something breaks on our end or on the partner slash client. And on the other hand, we have lots of different users, right? We have internal users that are business analysts, client services, or account managers. We have external users who look at our data through our website or use our APIs, and we have other systems that use the data sets that we produce. And this is a simplified version of our architecture. As you can see, we have external events. They go all through Kafka. We have different Spark streaming and Spark structure streaming applications that push data to the data lake that is backed by S3. And then from there, we run different batch jobs that produce data back to S3 and load it to either Redshift or Elasticsearch. And Redshift and Elasticsearch essentially have a similar data. It's just like one is optimized toward BA use case, which is powered by Tableau, and one is powering our web platform and our APIs. So this architecture is actually a little bit more complicated. So as usual, a little bit simplified, but I'm not going to go into a lot of details. The website uh, that we have provides reporting for our internal and ex external customers, and you can see a beautiful UI. However, we had some problems with this UI and our overall architecture that we picked. The primary issues that we have is customers have limited abilities to slice and dice data. So as you can see, it's a pretty um, fixed table that you can do some stuff, but if you want to go deeper, figure out like columns you want and do other things, it's pretty inf inflexible. So we wanted to change, um, that leads to more requests for custom reporting, which puts uh, more pressure on the BA and the reporting teams because we, they ha we have to provide custom reports instead of doing our first year work. So in order to do that, uh, in order to fix that, we needed new UI, but in order to support this new UI, uh, we ob obviously wanted to provide more like group by cap capabilities, filtering, and so on, but our current setup with Elasticsearch wouldn't support it. So we decided to look into different databases on the market that would provide. Um, also, um, the other parts about Elasticsearch that we didn't like is it's not easy to ingest data because you have to like, basically do pushes, there's no load and load from S3. There are no joins, so labels must exist somewhere. So if you change some label, you have to re-ingest all the data. It's difficult to query as you have to do JSON, so you have to like have some gateway that would, would translate your SQL to JSON or just fire JSON queries directly. And overall, like it leads to data duplication. So as I said, Redshift versus Elasticsearch, so if you change something in one, you have to change the other one and it causes some discrepancies. And there are obviously difficulties with the duplication and backfills uh, because of the way 
Elasticsearch is architected. So this is an example of one of the clusters that we have uh, for Elasticsearch. Uh, as you can see, like it's not a big one, but it um, pushes like toward like 7K a month, just a single cluster, and we have two of those. We looked and we decided to look at a lot of different alternatives for uh, as our analytics database. And you can see Apache, Pinot, Druid, Citus Data, Starrox, ClickHub, Snowflake, and Apache Kylin. And we didn't just look at the benchmarks and like presentations. We actually come up with a lot of product requirements and looked into each of them very, very uh, uh, closely. But I'm going to just give you this, and we can maybe discuss later about um, each of the databases. Uh, so Pinot and Druid are more real-time focus. There were no joins with an asterisk. Um, I was told that Druid supports it now in some limited capability. And obviously, you cannot fire like all kind of lim SQL queries that you like. Snowflake is a more of a data warehouse, and it's expensive, as you, some of you might know. Star Rocks, um, claims to be a competitor to ClickHouse, but it's too fresh to use in production. And Citus is too Postgres-oriented, and Microsoft acquired them, and they don't plan to support AWS, obviously. So we decided to look closer at ClickHouse, and we really like that there are many success stories about people using ClickHouse, and they put it on, on their GitHub, all the presentations are there. You can see what kind of problems people run into and other things. So uh, we decided to benchmark ClickHouse, right? We set up with uh, our own cluster with uh, um, on instance SSDs, EBS. And because we didn't want to um, benchmark Elasticsearch because as I said, it's pretty difficult to load data, manipulate. You have to translate SQL to JSON and so on. So we were looking at something like SQL-like, which is Redshift without cache. And this cluster, Redshift cluster, was three times more expensive than ClickHouse. So you can see that ClickHouse outperforms Redshift easily. We also looked at the um, query variants um, in terms of like times, because as you know, EBS is a network storage, so there will be obviously some delays in how data is retrieved. So obviously with, when you use EBS for some queries that, for example, take one year, there's more variance, but overall in within like the query time, it's like 10 seconds. So you can probably with that, 10%, sorry. And you can see that ClickHouse is pretty, um, this is EBS storage, and you can see it's pretty consistent in terms of like uh, returning results. There's some spikes to like 20, from seven seconds to 20, which is probably related to network nature of the storage. And we decided to eventually go with uh, obviously EBS because it's cheaper and easier to do snapshots, manage, scale and so on. We also looked at uh, how queries perform depending on the concurrency. So meaning that we're probably going to have lots of users interacting with our website and how ClickHouse is going to perform on various queries. And you can see that uh, the growth is, you, you can predict like that th there's no surprises in terms of like growth. Like you can put some curves and figure out like, okay, and we stay within like six seconds, which is pretty amazing. We also looked at the number of queries that we can fire simultaneously. And usually our users are gonna be using daily queries and we can fire like 200 queries per second and scale it. We also looked at this um, size of the data that we load. So on S3, uh, we had some different like events stored. It was taken like about 500 gigs in Parquet GZIP. And once we load it into ClickHouse, we saw that it only takes about 500 as well, um, but for like 6.5 billion rows, uh, which is great. And for in Elasticsearch, we made the same calculation and turns out it's about six times more. So we can save some money on actual storage. Uh, this is our um, current setup. Um, ClickHouse is kind of complicated to set up if you want to reach like complete fault tolerance. As you can see, 
we have ClickHouse nodes themselves. Each of those are in their own auto-scaling group. So in case one ClickHouse node dies, the auto-scaling group will bring them up. Um, we have Zookeeper, obviously. This all runs in um, different availability zones. So if one uh, availability zone dies, one data center, we are fine. And then we have network load balancers and um, also network load balance target groups to um, spread requests across different nodes. And you can see the cost is about the same that we got with Elasticsearch, but uh, with a mu uh, much higher performance and uh, way more features. Uh, monitoring is provided by Datadog. ClickHouse integrates with Datadog pretty easily, and we can see all the metrics. But uh, after about like six uh, months of running ClickHouse and looking closely at it, we figured out that there are like many complexities that you have to deal with, starting with Zookeeper. Nobody likes to run Zookeeper, especially when it fails. Replication is pretty complicated to set up, but it's sharding is way more complicated to set up. So once you hit like the size of the max instance, you have to shard. You hit you like right, how to do it, and you see it's very complicated. Upgrades uh, also pretty complicated. Resizing also and backups. Backups like I don't think like standard tool exists right now. Um, so we decided that ClickHouse and uh, ClickHouse Cloud. We were uh, early. Uh, users of the uh, private uh, preview. Uh, we haven't yet migrated, uh, but we're really considering it. And the reason is because it solves all the problems. So you don't have to run Zookeeper. You don't have to think about replication sharding. It scales for you. And you just left with ClickHouse as it, like a database. Like They even give you access to system-wide tables, so you're not missing anything. So as soon as like we figure out like some legal and security issues on our side, and we probably gonna uh, migrate to ClickHouse Cloud since it simplifies uh, cost of running ClickHouse. Um, before I was talking about that us having Redshift and Elasticsearch, so a natural question would be. Uh, once you m migrate to ClickHouse, why to even have Redshift, right? However, there's like um things that i don't think like clickhouse would be good uh, for example like in redshift we have uh like people tend to abuse it right because it's sql you you have all the data you run all kind of queries some queries run, run hours we don't think like clickhouse would be nice for that but with clickhouse sorry clickhouse cloud you can spin up a new cluster give it to be people and let them run their own workloads Another thing that we started experimenting with ClickHouse is ability to connect to Kafka directly. So here we define some table that connects to our Kafka directly, and we can ingest all kind of data. So this one is we experimented with uh, doing some anomaly detection on our transactions. Um, we created some table that gets populated automatically from ClickHouse. So we have materialized view and so on. So this is another thing that we wouldn't be able to do with Elasticsearch. And then as you can see, we can use the same SQL to analyze real-time data. So the other thing that we really liked is having dictionaries built in. So as I said, there are no joins in Elasticsearch. So in all our APIs that we provide to customers inside, we have to query um, different databases, different services to get the data. And here's an example of what we could do. So we just connect to Redshift, we specify the query, and we say, okay, create this dictionary using that Redshift table and update it every uh, five minutes. And then we can use it in all our joins. So the need for having the API doing uh, extra work disappears. So the end goal of all, all, all that I uh, was talking about is having ClickHouse serve multiple purposes. So as you can see, as I just uh, said, uh, we can fit Kafka directly to ClickHouse. We can use streaming apps and push data directly to ClickHouse as well. And for big batch processing, 
we would still utilize Spark and push to ClickHouse. So as you can see, like we still not, I don't think like we it makes sense for us to replace Redshift with ClickHouse because uh, Redshift uh, still gives you more SQL capabilities that people sometimes like to use. And I think, uh, but concentrating on ClickHouse as your single analytical da database makes a lot of sense for us and total cost of ownership is pretty limited, minimal. Uh, this is all I can say, and we're hiring. So if you if you want to join Rugged or have any questions, please fire any email. Go ahead. Uh, so the question for Elastic Block Storage, uh, we are running in AWS, so they provide EBS. So we use just that versus like you can fire instances with uh, I2, I3 with SSDs built in, right? We wanted to see w whether queries are going to be run slower or faster using SSDs, and we didn't see uh, any drops, oh, actually. So if we go back to our benchmarks, yeah, you can see that EBS versus SSD is like tied. It's the only the only difference is like cold starts. Okay. Uh, you mentioned you had different regions on up. Uh, what was that for testing? Availability zones. Uh, single cluster, but in ClickHouse, each node acts as like uh, independently. Like it, you can think about like one-to-one -one replication. It's not like Cassandra, uh, where you have to have like strong uh, consensus and one node only holds like partial data. I got this. So follow-up question: um, If it's three different availability zones, do you have one zookeeper cluster span across the three zones? Or Yes, so the question was uh, how we set up our Zookeeper cluster. So as you can see, um, Zookeeper nodes run alongside ClickHouse on separate instances, but within the same availability zone. And yeah. No, uh, the question was about cross availability uh, latency in Zookeeper. No, we haven't had experience with that. That uh, the question was if we use Tableau uh, uh, one click house cluster to serve both Tableau and APS. Uh, not at the moment. That's like something that we might be looking in future. See, that's one of the reasons why I mentioned ClickHouse Cloud. So it is easier to spin up like separate clusters, right? And we we wouldn't want to do that. For example, with Redshift, it's easy to spin up like a new Redshift data sharing, and we would like to have the same model in Click Cloud Cloud where we can separate workloads. So we definitely wouldn't want to like have the same cluster for both Tableau and APIs because, yeah, heavy users will affect the performance. Hello, bear with me. I'm not a front end or back encoder. However, as an entrepreneur. I'm trying to figure out, as a, a potential client, you're you're trying to figure out what type of best software to use to do the ana analytics to see if I want to add on, and how would I be able to um, figure out if you know what the best software is? No, we we're not in business figuring out so like what software is the best. Like we we like helping e-commerce e companies. And we wanted to see which analytic database best suits our needs. Cool. If there's no questions, thank you very much.